A lot of great uh, things going on this summer. I guess the biggest uh, centennial event had to be the wagon train. Oh, absolutely. Hundreds of people loaded aboard wagons and hit the dusty trail to experience what our forefathers experienced in coming to Wyoming and settling this great state. Along for the ride, at least part of the way, were Craig Kennedy and photographer Ron Sniffen, and they share this centennial wagon train story for you. Life on the Wyoming Centennial Wagon Train. Only these hardy souls who lived it for 30 hot and dusty days and sometimes bitter cold nights can tell you what it was like. They have earned the right to say they were part of the single longest, most exhaustive event of the Wyoming Centennial. I didn't know how tough it was. <laughs> I'm one tough lady. I'm ready to keep going. Yeah, it's fantastic. Now, before the wagon train finally rolled into Cody July 2nd, there was a little matter of 260 miles to take care of. 260 miles that began June 2nd in Fort Casper, then loosely followed the original trail cut by Jim Bridger, a route that the pioneers took after the Indians made the Mormon Trail route rather uncomfortable. Whether it's 1890 or 1990, it takes a special breed to endure all the trail's hazards for 30 straight days. Special people like Helen Bereski, who at her husband's urging hit the trail with only her horses as companions. The terrain has been unbelievable. We've had ruts and breakdowns and it's been wonderful. Would you have <laughs> missed it for the world? No, not for a million dollars. When we caught up with the wagon train, camp had already been set for a 98 degree Thursday afternoon just southeast of Powell. The worst was behind them. From this point on, asphalt and green grass was waiting, but not tonight. <laughs> I thought you blew those up. Modern day comforts are a welcome relief after a day on the trail. Well, it's better sleeping on an air mat as a non cactus. The camp circles are where friendships are made. People share their stories, exchange ideas, catch up on the news. It's also a place for a little horsing around. Finally, pair boots! Take the boots! I hate you! I hate you! Take down! Take down! The old horse tank is just one of many things these folks had the original pioneers did not. 300 gallons of water a day for the horses, another 150 gallons for the people. Another thing these folks had the pioneers didn't, mobile radio phones. A lot of folks wish they'd done without them here. Also, an ambulance and porta potties. And one thing the pioneers definitely did not have, a 40-foot refrigerated trailer stocked full of everything your heart desired. Well, the old Conestoga wagon hauled sugar and flour and spices and stuff like that, you know. They, I mean, they serviced the wagon train, too. But uh, this is a little sophisticated. I've got uh, all means of produce. I've got carrots. Well, apples, oranges, carrots, celery, cauliflower. Hot chocolate, chips, milk, bread, eggs, drink mix, all kinds of meat. About the only thing in scarce supply, ice to keep it all cool. Now, not everybody on the trail followed the original way of life, though they'd lead you to believe otherwise. These are jackrabbit hamburgers. Best, you can have, best we could find on the prairie. With all the horseback riders, they don't have their wagon to keep their stuff in, so they come by with a trailer every evening and bring their stuff into camp. But we find some of them we can't get back out of camp. It's like a security blanket. They're afraid to get away from that trailer. Security blanket or not, these folks join the wagon train to be part of history. No, not everybody's a real cowboy, but plenty are. Oh, there's a great number of these people that are excellent people and really know what they're doing. And they've come together on this wagon train to offer the tourist or the person that doesn't know the opportunity to actually live the experience. What is there to do for kids? Oh, I don't know. Just ride. Go riding after at night when it's cooled off and look for um, hunt rattlesnakes. And Have you found any? Yeah, we found two of them. And what'd you do with them? Killed them. And it wasn't the least bit uncommon to find scorpions out here. Seems after 26 days on the trail, everybody's got a story. I've been on it about a week, and it's been the most exciting thing I've done in a while. Uh, hold up. He's, he didn't like it at first, the horse didn't. He's a BLM horse. I adopted him at the Wild Horse Auction in Cheyenne. 
Uh, he threw me twice and drug me through camp once. Uh, he didn't like this too much. As the sun started going down on the Willwood camp, we caught up with one of the most famous members of the wagon train, the young man who earned the name Cactus Cody. I fell in the cactus. Fell in the cactus? Mm -hmm. How did it happen? Because, um... Uh, how many times you fell in the cactus? Three. Three? Three times now? No. Try 30. 30. <laughs> At least once a day, sometimes twice. When the day is done, it's time for fun. A little slice of the Old West can be found in every wagon circle. It was about one in the morning when we decided to turn in. Trust me, the music from this camp lasted long into the night. And chances are pretty good that the gal running the grill, Sheila Hagen, crossed paths with the night owls when she got up to fix the grits. So when's the day start for you? 3.30. 3.30? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you eat yet? Yeah. Want some more? No, I'm fine. This Friday morning began much like the day we just left behind, dusty and hot. And you know, after the day's news had been read, breakfast fed, it was back to work. Time to tear down camp, get ready for another day's ride. A ride that even a cowboy with a handicap would not miss out on. Good boy. Okay, I got no fit. Ooh. Ooh now. Ooh now. Ooh. Ooh boy. Ooh now. Usually have them scare everyone. Ooh now. Ooh now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Go up. Almost five hours after the sun first began the day, it was finally time to hitch him up, head him out. From a hilltop just outside of Powell, one could see just how impressive the wagon train really is. You get a better idea of just how vulnerable this little moving town could be 100 years ago. For all the stops along the way, the train members say, a lot of folks rolled out the red carpet, but none with such flair as the people of Powell. For this, the arrival of the Centennial Wagon Train would be their centennial event. And as the folks on the street told us, one of the biggest things to happen in this Park County town ever. As the tail end of the wagon train was still winding through Powell, the first wagons were arriving at the most lush campsite along the way, Park County Fairgrounds. The grass green and the showers just a few steps away. But like every other day at the end of the trail, there was work ahead, back to setting up the tent. But on this night, the reward was waiting. Willie Nelson was here. And this is what a lot of wagon train folks had been waiting for ever since leaving Fort Casper. And while Willie delivered the goods, friends rejoiced that they had made the trip, a trip based on history that will go down in history.